بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته حياكم الله We give thanks and praise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every blessing has blessed us with Indeed the blessing that we are living nowadays is a kind of blessing you need to lose this kind of ni'mah for you to understand its worth that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَئِنْ كَفْرَتُمْ إِنَّا عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٌ The more you are grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal, the more He increases you. And by the time you are ungrateful to Allah, and this is something where you actually feel the wrath of Allah Azza wa Jal, so therefore, it is very, very important for un to understand that the ni'mah of Allah Azza wa Jal is worth something that we need to actually put at the prime of our ibadah to always give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen when we wake up in the morning. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen when we open our prayer, start reading the Quran. Alhamdulillah after our food and drink and shelter. Each and every time we have to thank Allah the Almighty. For verily, your bread, your bed, your spouse, your children are actually a dream for others who are undergoing some kind of oppression on the face of the earth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all and bless them and make every difficulty easy for the whole of the ummah. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Last week, <clears throat> We have spoken about the angels. Who are the angels? And we've spoken about how they are created. We spoke about when were they created. We spoke about the great size of the angels. We spoke about the description of the angels, the beauty of the angels, the wings of the angels. And we spoke about the angels do not eat and drink. This is something that we spoke about last week. If we can do a quick recap, last week we spoke about the side of the angels. Do you remember any? Tell me. Beautiful. The side of Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, and how many wings he had? 600 wings. And when he came down with the Prophet Muhammad saw so Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he covered the whole of the horizon. That's Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam. Ajib. And we spoke about the throne bearers. وَيَحْمِنُ عَرْشُ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذٍ ثَمَانِيَةٍ and subhanAllah, we mentioned the throne bearers, those who actually hold upon the throne of Allah Azza wa Jalla, the angels. I mean, we don't see them. And look at their size. From the air look to the shoulders, how many year distance? 500 years to 700 years distance of traveling from the air lobe to the shoulders. This is just from the air lobe to the shoulders. And imagine that. The size of the angel who are actually holding the throne of Allah Azza wa and eight of them will be holding the throne of Allah Azza wa al Qiyamah. We spoke about having to believe in the unseen. To so all that whole session, the journey we're going to go through is all about the unseen, about the angels, about the unseen of what we haven't seen before. About the unseen, what we do not see now, 
and about the unseen that we are not seeing now, but we shall see in the future. <clears throat> like how we mentioned last time, what are the unseen of the last of the of the past? The unseen of the past, like the story of the prophets. We believe in it. We never seen it. And Nabi Sallallahu have we seen the Prophet them? We haven't seen. He's unseen to us now. The unseen of the past, we believe in it. The unseen of today, we have a Qareen, we don't see it. The Malaika are there, we don't see it. Like you guys have come here today and listening to the talk, the angels are up there. Opening their wings and sending the peace and blessing and forgiveness of Allah. Do you see? You don't see it. The Munkir and Kiram and Katibin, the one who actually act, writing your deeds, Allah Azza wa Jal. And in the future, the Alamat al Sa'ah, Isa alayhi salatu was salam, Jannah and Jahannam, the soul, the trumpet, all these are unseen of the future. And this is what makes us have full certainty about Allah Azza wa Jal. When it comes to Iman, it's about your unseen belief. We believe, okay, we do the salah, the zakah, the hajj, it's about physical. And belief is about the iman, to believe in the unseen. And if you look at the six pillars of faith, the unseen. Billahi, wa malakatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulihi, wa yawm al-akhir, wa qadir khayri, wa sharri min Allah ta'a, wa al-ba'ath ba'ad al-mawt. All of them are unseen. Yeah, before one. No, the one before, yeah, no, yeah. But the one before, we haven't seen it. The one the Torah and the Injil that has come before. So when the Prophet was telling this to the Arab of the Quraysh, it was already Munharif. The Torah and the Injil was already been edited. But we believe that was revealed upon Musa and Isa and Dawood, alayhi salatu wasalam, and Suhub and Ibrahim. The Quran is here. The Quran is here to actually make us understand what are the unseen. What are the unseen? From the Quran, we get to know about that. Because subhanAllah, this is about your iman. But like how we mentioned last time, some people, they need to see things and touch them to believe. And that's not Islam. I mean, the qadr, the destiny, we don't see destiny. We don't touch destiny. We believe in destiny. al qadr. We don't see in pain, but we believe in pain. Yes or no? But therefore, this is all about of the unseen, believing the unseen. We spoke about the angels have wings and what comes down the wings. We said pearls and diamonds fall down and the beauty of the angel we spoke about last week. And we say the angels do not eat and drink. Today, we're going to speak about number of the angels, name of the angels, power of the angels, speed of the angels, and the duties of the angels. If we're able, if we have time to do it, inshallah. The number of the angels. <clears throat> the, name, the number of the angels are known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only. The number of the angels are known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ajib. We know about Jibreel, Mikael, wa Malik al Maut, al Ridwan, al Malik, al Israfil. These are the names that we know. And subhanAllah, there are angels that take care of the clouds, of the mountain, of the rains. The angels take care of writing your deeds. Take your angels are there to take care of the people to remove the soul of the people. Angels that come into the qabr. How many angels are going to the qabr and actually making the dead sitting down in the qabr asking the questions? How many angels are there? So the number of angels are only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned in regard to the Bayt al Ma'mur, you know, the Kaaba. On the Kaaba in the, in the heaven, where the angels make the tawaf. Then Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned that every day 
70,000 angels visit and leave and they never return to you again. And another group come again after them. Every day, 70,000 go there. They make tawaf and they don't return back to it again. Subhanallah. It tells you the amount of angels that are there for subhanallah. And look at that one. In Sahih Muslim, and Nabi Sallallahu mentioned, hell will be brought forth that day by means of 70,000 ropes. Hell will be pulled on that day. How many ropes? 70,000 ropes. Each of which will be pulled by 70,000 angels. 70,000 ropes will be attached with hell. It will be pulled on that day and brought forth before people to be thrown in there. May Allah protect us. And each and every rope is being pulled by 70,000 angels. You do the math and multiplication yourself. And it tells you how many angels are there. Can we actually, this is one of the pullers of hell. 70,000 angels that will be pulling each and every rope of 70,000 that are attached to angels, to the hell. Subhanallah, how big it is. And the numbers of angels that will be pulling that hell, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. So the number of angels are unknown. There are people out there who have a specific number of angels. They have no proof whatsoever. No proof whatsoever. Even the number of the prophets and the messengers we spoke about before. The number of them exactly are not mentioned. The other week hadith that mentioned that we have 124,000 prophets and 313 messengers. But that hadith is weak. But some scholars say we can't take it as a hujjah. We can't take it as something we can take information from. Exactly, we do not know. Like for the angels, something unknown that we do not know the numbers of the angels. The names of angels. The angels have names. But we know only a few of them. We know only a few of them. And the few that we know, many of them are authentic, and many of them are not authentic. Israel and all these people put in. Now, many of them are authentic, and many are not authentic, which we're going to mention in the later on. Jibril. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned over here, whoever then enemy to Jibril. For he brings down the revelation to your heart that Allah's will. A confirmation of what went before and guidance and glad tidings to those who believe. And whoever is an enemy of, to Allah and his angels and prophets to Jibreel and Mikael. For Jibreel and Mikael mentioned in the Quran. Allah is an enemy to those who reject faith. And that was a re revelation that was revealed Addressing the Jews who are having issues with Angel Jibreel Ali Salam. For therefore, we know very well Jibreel Ali Salam, they were among the Prophet, among the angels, as well as Mikael, or among the angels. Israfil. Israfil. Mentioned by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, that one day he said, How can I feel at ease? How can I feel at ease when Allah has already ordained Israfil to place his lips at the trumpet? Allah has already ordained Israfil to place his lips at the trumpet. So what Israfil is doing now, just waiting for Allah to ask, to tell him to blow it. Israfil is just waiting for Allah Azza wa Jal to give him the command to blow. 
ونفخ في الصور فصاعق من في السماوات والأرض. by the time he blows فصاعق من في السماوات والأرض heaven and the earth and all they're going to be shaken which is on يوم القيامة ملك and Allah سبحانه وتعالى mentioned يا مالك it says that people of hell will cry اقضى علينا ربك would that your Lord put an end to us? So the people of hellfire will call towards the angels. Ya Malik, يَقْضَ عَلَيْنَا رَبُّكَ Let you, is, is your Lord not going to stop that kind of torment for us anymore? Subhanallah, Malik. So he said, Israfil, Jibreel, Mikael, and now we have Munkar wa Nakir. Names that we know, yeah? Munkar wa Nakir. For Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned about when we are put into the grave, he said, all oh, we are unseen now. It depends upon you to believe or not to believe. And it's there in the Quran. When we are put in the grave, subhanAllah, by the time the last person leave the maqbara or the place where you have been buried, at that moment, when they're all gone, subhanAllah, and some others call opinion while they're still there, while they're making dua for you, the angel come. When the dust has already been put on you, the angel comes. There come to him two blue black angels. One of whom is called Munkar and the other is called Nakir. They ask him, What did you use to say about this man? Two blue black angels. Blue black angels. Ajib. The colors are actually been mentioned. One of whom is called Munkar and the other is called Nakir. Which one is Munkar and Nakir? We do not know. One of them blue, black. They ask him, the person who's dead, what do you used to say about this man? And he says, he the slave of Allah. And I bear witness that there is no God except Allah and Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. And they say, we knew beforehand that you used to say this. And subhanAllah, the grave will be wide and opened. SubhanAllah, to a size of 70 cubics by 70 cubics. 70 cubics by 70 cubics. How much is that? 70 cubics or 60 cubics is 30 meters. 30 meters. So let's say 32 meters, 33 meters, because 60 cubics was Adam and his salatu Adam was 60 cubics. So by the time you have actually mentioned or answered the question properly in the grave, subhanAllah, the grave will be widened in the length size and the width size of almost like 35 meters width and 35 meters length. Your grave is not that small hole anymore. It's a big place. Probably a bigger place than you used to have in this world. SubhanAllah. Uh, 30 meters is a lot, yes or no? 30 meters left, right? well, you know, about, <laughs> about rooms and everything. So 30 meters is double of this? Hmm? Double of this, huh? Like a football pitch. Football pitch, huh? 100 feet. 100 feet. Allahu Akbar. So, okay, you can say football pitch. Ajib. So your grave comes inside of it, almost like a football pitch. Allah. Subhanallah. When you think about it, in middle, and that grave becomes, that's right. 
It's called the Barzakh. It's another life over there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that size in our qabr. Allah, we always look for houses. We don't get this size. So maybe in the qabr, get excused from our family now. Wait for the qabr, wait for the qabr. And it will be illuminated. The qabr will be illuminated. So qabr is part of the unseen. And the angel will tell him, sleep. Say, sleep, go back to my family and tell them. And he will say, the person, go back to my family and tell them. They tell him, sleep like a bridegroom whom no one will wake up except his most beloved until Allah raise him. Subhanallah. So the person will tell the angel, go back to my family and tell them that I'm in good condition. The angel will tell the person, sleep like a bridegroom. And no one shall wake you up until, unless... Your loved one. Who is it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until yawm al-qiyamah. Subhanallah. But if it is someone who is not able to answer the question, you do not follow the Prophet ﷺ. You do not follow the Quran. How will you be able to say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. The angel will say, but you will not even be able to say at that moment, but Allahu Rabbi, والإسلام وديني والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رسولي أبدا you will not be able to say that نبي because you never used to follow them and in that moment the grave the earth will be told to squeeze him so he'll be crushed until his ribs are interlocked and he will remain like that until يوم القيامة look at the فرق the difference between these two persons that is why. What we need to focus upon in our life now is the life in the Qabr. I forget Jannah. We need to pass by the Barzakh first, yes or no? Al Barzakh, I mean, this is not what we want to speak about, but Al Barzakh, if I ask you a question, a person who passed away, Not long ago, in 1923, until today, how many years? 100 years. Yeah. How long he has been in Barzakh now? 100 years. He died 1923, and today is 2023. He's in Barzakh for how many years? 100 years. How many years he stayed, he stayed in the dunya? Let, let's say 60? 50. 50? Yeah, Allah, 70. Let's give it 100. He stayed in this world 100 years. And in the Barzakh, now it's been 100 years, and how many years left until Yom al Qiyamah? So which life is longer, Barzakh or a dunya? Definitely the life of Barzakh is longer. So in that small dunya where we are now, we need to strive to live in a better place in the longer period, which is in Barzakh. If you live in Barzakh, if the Barzakh become a garden of paradise, halos. how the Prophet Muhammad said, the Barzakh is the first phase of Akhirah. If this is good, everything going to be good. If this is not good, know that what's going to come in front is not going to be good. If your barzakh is good, you feel the garden of, pa of paradise in barzakh, your hisab will be good. Your resurrection will be good. You will be able to move the Prophet Muhammad as his ummah. He will drink from the house of the Prophet Your place will be in Jannah. Shafa'a will be given to you because khalas, you already feel it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our barzakh like a garden of paradise. Subhanallah. Harut wa marut. So we spoke about Jibra'il, Mikail, Israfil, and then Munkir Nakir, 
And then we speak about Harut or Marut. Yeah. When they were sent, I came down to Babylon to the angels, Harut or Marut. Then before. Yeah. Where, subhanAllah, they came as a test. Harut or Marut. They came and then they brought the knowledge of magic. And they test your people to see who take who doesn't take it. It's a fitna. In Babylon. But later on, later on, at the time, they started developing that fitna until it became something big. Something like you did, a fitna gets developed. Yes, people may start stealing something small. It gets developed, start stealing, stealing, stealing big. Start from bank account, start stealing from different places. Zina starts in different, small, small things, and it goes out big. Any fitness starts small and goes out big. Same thing, now we have this kind of magic, it goes out big. So that's why it was said it was a fitna, not to take it, but to test people who are among them wants to get the, the pleasure of the dunya temporary. SubhanAllah. So these are the angel that has been mentioned from the Quran and the Sunnah. And the others that have been mentioned, they could either be weak or fabricated. Weak or fabricated. Even Ridwan, like I said, some scholars say it is weak, some of it is uh, Hassan, that the one at the gate out. Oh, Jannah, Allah Ta'ala, Ahda. The speed of the angels. The greatest speed known to man today is the speed of light. Yes or no? Speed of light. This is the greatest speed known to man. The angels are able to travel much faster than this. Hardly had an inquiry completed a question to the Prophet ﷺ, but Jibreel will bring the answer from Allah Azza wa Jalla. Subhanallah. We say the speed of light, the fastest one. But Subhanallah, when when there's something called the unseen, and we're going to speak about the jinn as well later on about the Ifrit, about uh, the one who spoke with Suleiman, how he brought the throne of Bilqis. But sometimes, angel, the Sahaba or the Quraysh will be asking questions to the Prophet وسلم, before they finish the answer, before they finish the question, the answer already came from Jibreel thinking of an eye. Imagine the time he's gone up and got the information and came down straight away. Speed. Even when the jinn قال عفريت من الجنة أن آتيك في قبل أن 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 يرتدي أن إليك طرفك أن يقوم من مقامك. Ifrit said, you know, I'm going to bring the throne before you get up from your throne or from your time, from your place. Might take time. And another one who had the knowledge. من العلم أنا آتيك في قبل أن يرتد إليك طرفك. I will bring the her throne in the twinkling of an eye. Wow, we've taken a boat straight away. Talking about speed of light. Look at the قدرة of Allah عز وجل. Subhanallah. So therefore, the speed of the angels. Is something that we cannot actually just come here and talk about it. So therefore, these are the things that we wanted to uh, speak about today. The speed of the angels. And next we're going to speak about the duties of the angels. And at the same time, speak about the power of the angels. And at the same time, and the names of the angels. These are the things that uh, the number of the angels as well we spoke about today. So these are the things that we'd like to share with you all Uh uh, today and uh, what we spoke about last week in regards to what they eat and what they drink. 
what they eat and what they drink is something that they do not need to do so. We eat and we drink for what purpose? Mm -hmm. To stay alive and to make ibadah to Allah Azza wa Jalla. For them, they don't need this. Whatever they are asked to do, is what they do. But therefore, we eat, and then after we eat, and then we defecate the waste. The angels got nothing to do with that. And the reason why we say that is because they are pure. They do not become impure. Yeah? Because Allah mentioned in the Quran for them as, لا يمسه إلى المطهرون they do not touch the Quran and the Lord of Mahfud are not being touched except by those who are pure. And who are the pure? The pure one are the angels. The pure one are the angels. So last week we got a question do the angels uh, bring progeny? No. Because by the time by the time we say they get married or the project they give brings progeny, they come into impurity. They had to do, but they're not. They're not. All right. This is something that I wanted to speak about. And inshallah, we're going to finish it next week Ta'ana. And of course, we're going to speak about um the world. We spoke about the world of the angels. We're going to speak about the world of the unseen, anything to do with the unseen, the barzakh the bridge, the journey from the death until Jannah or until the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about the alim al ghayb which is the world of the jinn and the insan we know and the angels all these things we need to know and understand that as Muslim these are the things that may happen, may occur and the outside, angels are there and what shape do they take, jinn are there and what shape do they take and what do we, how do we actually protect ourselves from the spiritual being out there, good one or bad one? These are the things that we're going to speak about, inshallah, in these kind of sessions. It's not going to be too long. Always on a Monday at 8.15, if you're not able to come to the Marquez, which I would advise people to come here to the Marquez Jumeirah Islamic Learning Center. If you can't make it and we know you're pretty far because of the traffic, you can always share the link with all your friends and neighbors and family, and they can join at the comfort zone. Any question here? What, what, what information about Munkar and Munkar? Yeah. Yeah, hadith, hadith of the Prophet. And it's very, very famous. Let me just get back here. Okay. Medical mode as well is there. This is from Abu Huraira in Sahih Tirmidhi. Yeah? Yeah. In the? Yeah. In Tirmidhi. I can share the hadith if you want in the chat if you want. Yeah, we can have a look here. It is needing, it is squeezing of the grave for both Muslim and non-Muslim. The Muslim get a comfortable squeeze and the non-Muslim get a hard squeeze. It is for both. Squeezing for both Muslim and non-Muslim. For the Muslim, we have people who are mutayr, people who are obedient to Allah. And among the Muslim, there are people who are disobedient to Allah Azza wa Jal. And those people who do not or who did not believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, this is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salam alaikum. If these are the two scenarios for the believers and disbelievers, when will the other punishment of grave happen? This is it. Any other punishment of the grave will happen right after this. Because she's referring to, I was told the good souls, Welcome each other in Barzakh. So visit each other and ask for the newcomer about those who left behind. And the dead believer also had a deed into the form of human beings keeping company. All the authentic, yes. In Jannah, it is known that, yes, people visit each other. And in Barzakh as well, there are narration that says, yes, people uh, do visit, and we have narration that they visit each other. 
and your good deed is going to come in human form and keep your company. This is a, this is something that's good in regard to narration as well. And any other thing that come after in regard to the punishment, it come after the squeezing of the of the body. Even uh, one of the Sahabi who was supposed not to get the Prophet said, even this Sahabi, I think Sa'ib ibn Waqqas, he also was being squeezed. What well, the Prophet said, because it was so good, where we thought that he wanted to get squeezed, and the Prophet was, was, said, was told that he also was squeezed. Sad. Medical mode is an angel. Do we have many medical mode? Scholars still have only one medical mode. Yeah. Yes. How does he do that? Wallahu ta'ala a'ala. Do we have multiple medical mode? Wallahu ta'ala a'ala. We don't know. You know, when it comes to the world of the unseen, whatever narrated to us, we believe. Whatever not narrated to us, we stop here. Medical mode, do we have narration that we have multiple, that we have some in this region and some in in uh, Pakistan, India, Romania. Uh, <laughs> we don't know. But what we know, we have medical mode, which is one angel, Allah Ta'ala. Do, an do angel have free will? They do not have free will. Angels do not have free will. They're asked to do whatever Allah asked them to do. They do, they do. they do whatever Allah command them to do. They cannot just do whatever they, they want to do like how we do. The jinn and the insan, they can do as they wish. But the malaika, ma'murun, there are some, there are the species that are commanded to do what's supposed to be done. But Allah Azza wa Jalla mentioned in Surah at tahrim wa yaf'aluna ma yu'marun. Sheikh, can people affected with jinn or affected with magic eat beef? Can evil eye kill someone? Well, many of these questions I would like to delay until we get into the jinn session, but I can mention about that. Uh, can people affected with jinn? Yes, of course. It's mentioned in Surah Al Jinn, it's mentioned in uh, different surah and in Surah Al Baqarah. Or oh, affected with, with magic. It be well, sometime it may happen, and maybe they actually put the magic into the or poison sometime poison into meat. They can actually work on meat, they make you eat, they make they give it to you. Sometime the fortune teller, the black magician, they do their kind of uh, black magic mischief on food, they give it to you to eat. Yes, why not? It may happen. Do we have guardian angels? Yes, we have it. Angels that actually write each and every deed of what we do. Sheikh, can you please make dua? I passed my university exam. <laughs> May Allah make. Uh, uh, one of the brothers saying, please study hard. Study hard and put your trust in Allah Azza wa Jal, you will pass your exam. All right? What was that interaction between uh, Ibrahim Ali and Ali Muslim and the Muslims? Like what? Which kind of story was it? When when he was announced that he should have a son, and he was, but I think that's the father. No. Ibrahim was old. Yeah. But, no. The story of Ibrahim Ali Salatu Salam had different faith where he met angels. Jibril, uh, Ibrahim السلام, met angels in regards to his wife getting baby one time. Second time he met, uh, you know, by the time Ismail became big, yeah, but slaughtering. And then when he was building the Kaaba, when he was thrown in the fire, yeah, yeah, we were, yeah, we were made a, a cool place. Jibreel uh, Ibrahim السلام, severed because his guess what? He was a an ummah in his own. And he was being held by the angels a lot. Good question. 
So he has many, many phases of angels helping him or seeing the angels in different shape. You know, when they came, when his wife, Sarah, I, yes, about eating, when the angels, sort of Hijr mentioned about it. Yeah, different. Okay. Shukran, barakallahu feekum, wa jazakum allahu khair, subhanakallahu bihamdik, ashadu wa la ilaha ila antistaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk, wa barakallahu feekum, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.